Cow dung! What's going on now? Well, you gotta stack this up and we light it up. You have like rubber gloves or like yeah, some... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your bare hands. <laughs> okay. Today we're back with the Overlander India team, Uday and Ajit. They've already schooled me on Rajasthani desert cooking. So he's cutting off some of this meat. I'm seeing little bits of it. Yeah, oh my. Last time I fell into a meat coma, but it looks like that won't be happening today. So no meat. No, there's no meat. Today we're making a local dish called dalbati and a lot of it. In the olden days when people went to battle, they would actually bury these dough balls in sand and leave them all day. And the method of cooking is like nothing I've seen before. Cow dung is used in this area as a cooking medium. They take it to a different level completely. And if that wasn't enough, we're on a race against the clock. First of all, thank you all for having me today. All right, they're all doing it. All right. I'll be attempting to cook up 50 meals for these eager school kids by lunchtime. Don, do we buy enough food? Well, I hope so. If it's less, then we go hungry. So grab some cow chips, start a fire, and gather around the computer screen. We're doing desert cooking Rajasthani style again. <laughs> Ajit and I are on our way to a small village school. We plan to meet the children and teach them all about the complex world of food reviewing. I am with Ajit of Overlander India and we are, where are we? Beginning of the Thar Desert in Western Rajasthan in India. As we go further west towards the border of Pakistan, the desert becomes more and more arid. Here you will find a lot of agriculture and you will get a chance to see people who haven't really changed their traditional form of cuisine. In this area, there are some communities known as the Bishnoi arguably the world's first environmentalist. They live in hamlets in the middle of their own agricultural fields. They will not even cut a tree for firewood. Cow dung is used in this area as a cooking medium. They take it to a different level completely. Oh, what's going on here? This is an oasis of sheep and goats, and then there's a shepherd over here, and he looks like a real shepherd. He is a real shepherd. You know what I mean. There's a lot of posers out there. <laughs> uh, hello, sir. Uh, nice to meet you. How many sheep and goats do you have? Hey. He's got a hundred. Hundred? What are you doing right now? Getting them a drink of water. Do they eat these? No, they don't eat. They use them for milk and milk. Wool. Is there any trick to making them trust you? Hey there. I could be a shepherd. Guys, look at this. Shepherding. I'm doing it. Does he ever pet them? Because they're really bad at being pet. Was this one misbehaving? Oh, he's taking a leak. Hey, buddy. Oh, he's so freaked out, though. Hi. The amazing thing is they're not actually eating any of these sheep or goats. They're just here for the milk and I think for their wool. They still seem pretty stressed out anyway, so they're not used to this. All right, take care. A real life shepherd. That's so cool. Ajit and I arrive at the school. Despite the modest scenery and it having been many years since my own schooling, I can't help but feel a bit nervous. Right now we are outside of a school and are there many foreigners coming here? This school, no, nobody's come here. Okay, I have a bad history with young kids. Um, when they see me, they just kind of cry. Really? Yeah. They're gonna be a little curious. They might tug at your shirt a little bit. All right, that's get, fine. Get used to it. I can handle that. All right, let's head in. Okay. Oh boy. Um, I, I feel like... Good morning. <laughs> I feel like it's my first day of school. Is it okay if I teach them one vocabulary word? Yes, absolutely. I want to teach you one very important English word whenever you're trying out some food. In Hindi, we say badia. In English, we say yummy. Badia to. Yummy. Yummy. Yeah. We're gonna go cook lunch. We'll see you soon. Uh. <laughs> hey, they're all doing it. All right. These are our dinner guests, this is our kitchen, and this is the food. The countdown has begun as we prepare lunch for all these kids. But there's already a potential problem. Hopefully Uday has the answer. I'm here with the other half of Overlander, my buddy Uday. I'm pumped for this huge meal we're about to cook. Is this gonna be enough for all those kids and me? You've invited the whole school. We have to prepare a meal for at least 70 people. Yeah, was I being overzealous? I thought, do we buy enough food? Well, I hope so. If it's less, then we go hungry. We're making dal bati, a simple meal that would feed a whole army. Punch meal dal, which is five lentils together. And bati is rolled up dough, and then that is going to be cooked in... Uh... Yeah, I wanted to ask, what is this secret ingredient over here, though? That is the dried up cow dung, which is collected from the fields. And we can use that for and burning? Yes, it takes maybe four or five of these uh, cakes to cook your whole meal. You know, the five different lentils. Green lentil, which is called the moong. Gram lentil, which is the chana dal. Green lentil without the husk. The red lentil and pigeon pea. The doll starts with a specific portion combination of these five lentils. Another one. Lentil. Yeah. One. And a half. 
0.5. Yes. It's just kind of just dip, dab, and taste. You kind of yeah, just figure much, it out as you much. go. Next, the lentils hit a boiling pot of water, along with turmeric and salt. While that boils, we move on to something a little more doughy. So right here, we have this huge platter of wheat flour, and this is gonna be for the bati, the yeah. bread. So we're kneading the dough. We're adding water. In this bread, is it just two ingredients? Salt and wheat. And then just a lot of manpower. Kind of punching it. This is good. This is kind of therapy, too. Are you thinking about your bully from middle school? After the dough has formed, it's time to ball it up. First of all, yeah. hit it. Huh. Yeah, your enemy. The olden days when people went to battle, they would actually bury these dough balls in sand. No tinfoil. No tinfoil. They just dust it off yeah. and then eat it. You'll do the same thing. This is like the most extreme bread I've ever had. Oh, we got to make at least 200 of these. I don't know how to... There we go. Well, all these kids eat one? As many as they want. Wow, I absolutely got schooled. I mean, <laughs> zoom in on this. Look how perfect that is. And then you have mine. With cracks. Yeah, a lot of cracks. <laughs> I hope they'll like it. I'll try not to touch too many of these balls. Next is the bread baking and an all-time first on the Best Ever Food Review Show. With no oven available, we're using the next best heat source burned cow dung. And no, I am not joking around. Cow dung! What's going on now? Well, you gotta stack this up and we light it up. You have like rubber gloves or like yeah, some... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your bare hands. <laughs> okay. Oh, it has no smell. It doesn't smell, it just smells like dirt. But as long as it doesn't taste like... I'm not gonna be tasting this one. <laughs> and the final hit to our hit stack, the cherry on top. Is this really that flammable? I can just throw it on it on this pile of Sit and light it. Shut some paper. It's not cheating? Yeah, perfect. I'll put this piece of sh in here. Just like that, first try. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> It takes about 30 minutes for the cow dung to burn down into these hot, fiery embers. Perfect for cooking our round and not so round bati balls. Oh, really? You just toss it in like bati ball? Okay, I'll do one too. Oh, God, it's so hot. Ugh. This is so nuts. Once the dough balls are in contact with the embers, they're gently rolled around until they develop an even crust on the outside. After the bati has developed a crust, they're removed from the embers, but the inside is still raw. Once the embers die down a bit, the bati are reintroduced and even covered in hot cinders, allowing them to cook all the way through. I think after it cools down a little bit, they're gonna throw it all back on there, cover it up, and then it'll cook all the way through. Now they're almost ready to eat. To remove the ash, all the bread balls are loaded into a burlap sack. It is now time to dust it off. This is how they're getting all the yes, ash off. All the ash and whatever that is left on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is tremendous. So the bread is piping hot, like fresh out the oven. I'm gonna break it open. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, it's wow. Just from that initial singeing, they've developed this crust on the outside, and then the rest is cooked evenly inside here. I'm gonna take a big bite. Can I get my Mmm. Even just alone, that's really nice. You did it. I mean, we all did it, you know? But mostly, mostly you guys. I'm told the children are just finishing up their lesson and will be heading here any minute. But we still need to finish this meal prep. According to Uday, we must temper the doll, which basically means to add zest and spice, turning the flavor dial up to 11. A side pan with hot ghee and cumin seeds also gets chilies, onions, green chilies, ginger, chili powder, turmeric, and tomato. The bread is like biscuits and the doll is like gravy. They love each other. They need each other. The children finally arrive and they are hungry. Luckily, we've finished preparing all the food just in time. Now the only question remains, will they think it's yummy? Now that the meal is fully prepared, there's, oh, I don't know, like 50 kids here, and it's my pleasure right now to serve everybody. So here we go, Bati, Bati. I think I made that one, kind of a crack there. I did my best. The bati is served and the kids know exactly what to do. They begin shredding it into smaller pieces, perfect for soaking up a heaping scoop of dal. How are you doing? Yummy? Yummy! Yummy! They learned it. Yummy? Yummy. Yeah. How is it? Is it good? Yummy. Yummy? Yeah. All right, enjoy. The children are fed and satisfied. Cooking for them was its own reward. And finally, sampling the meal itself is the cherry on top of this desert experience. What an exciting day. You must be very hungry now. I'm starving, but it was a delight to serve all these other kids. Now you can eat the food that you cooked on shit. <laughs> So from here, we're gonna take this insanely flavorful dal and put it on the bati, and that's just gonna soak up those delicious spiced juices. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Mm. 
Oh, um, <laughs> so delicious. Strong lentil flavor coming through. And the tampering later on with all the spices. Oh, wow. What is it? It's pico de gallo. The same thing like from Mexico. You know, make, make a mix of everything. Oh, yeah. yes. Roll it, Hannah. Mmm. Mmm. My gosh, there's something about being like in the desert, out here, the kids. Did I? Is there something I said? Well, there were kids here at one point. <laughs> Eat it and beat it. <laughs> I think they found out about the cow dung. Yeah, that's what happened there. So the bread itself is just very dense, almost like chewy, a little doughy inside. Mm -hmm. The spices are incredible. And there's something about just being out here that makes it even more enjoyable. Like when you have a barbecue on the beach. Dal bati in, in the fields. The desert version <laughs> of that, yeah, exactly. Mm. I want to say thank you to Overlander India for this experience today and for you guys. This video was made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. Peace. Peace. Nailed it. Why can't we face?